Hi, this is Eric Martin. We're Board Game Geek. I'm here with Roberto Demelio from Eric. Aries Games looking at Divinity Derby, exactly. uh, which is one of your 2017 releases. Yes, yes. And I can guess it's a race game? Uh, from the race Derby, game but... and a betting game as well. Okay. okay, yes. Are we... So... What are we doing? Who okay. are we here? Okay, well, we are. So the premise to the game is that uh, Zeus uh, is, uh, you know, the Olympic old fathers. Uh, he <laughs> throw a party to his god friends, so he invited uh, gods from all over the world and space time. So Anansi, Horus, uh, with Alco, Atlaud, and they all gather on Olympus. They start to have a nice uh, lunch together. They start drinking and laughing and joking. Soon they start uh, um, asking each each other and making bets about uh, which one of the legendary flying creature is the, is the faster ones. Okay. So very soon uh, the jokes and bets start into a serious uh, betting competition and they decide to summon all creatures from space time and get them <laughs> into the race and get, let's see who's, who's the fastest one. Uh, so the game is about uh, racing, about these flying creatures race on this uh, sky track uh, all, all uh, along this uh, mythic Greek landscape, but it's mostly about betting. In fact, uh, as the god, you are trying, as one of the gods, you are trying to manipulate the race uh, using uh, movement cars uh, while trying of course to place the bets on the creatures in a way that you will score more victory points and uh, and win uh, and win uh, by essentially by placing the right bets uh, on the right uh, creatures uh, at the um, core of the system you see these are these card holders as you notice I didn't put the card holders exactly in front of us because uh, you are playing with two hands of cards. So one of the uh, hand of cards uh, is uh, uh, shared with your right neighbor, and the other hand of cards is shared with your left neighbor. Right. Uh, players with uh, familiarity with uh, many games may remember Habungut, yes. uh, which is uh, actually the, by the same designer, Carlo Rossi. So it's uh, he used the same concept. Uh, actually, this, is, this game is both the father and son of Habungut. <laughs> <laughs> really, because uh, the, 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 that happens with God, so you know that right. you can be father and son yourself. Um, we sorry for any religious people, but uh, just a joke. Uh, so, uh, no, essentially, the, uh, the game Carlo designed was originally a racing game. Then, through development uh, in Habungut, the racing game turned into an economic kind of game. Uh, after Habungut was released, he came back to work again on the original idea of uh, using this mechanic on a racing game. And from this further development, this game was born. So this was uh, both uh, uh, an ancestor of Habungut in this item uh, and the center. We actually do also have rights uh, to Habungut as well. So we were, uh, for many, a lot of time, thinking what was better to do, better to re-release the previous game Game, which is out of a catalog uh, everywhere, or to release the new one, we decided to do the new one, but this doesn't mean that Habungut also cannot right. come back in the future. So this shared holder me card holder mechanic is one of the things that we really like, because in a way it ends up as a sort of drafting mechanic, where essentially you are, you are choosing cars uh, in competition with your uh, right hand neighbor on one side, you're choosing cards in competition with your left hand neighbor on one side. The fact that you have about uh, half of the cards in the game, if you're playing a four player game, so inside means that you can place bets based on some pretty solid information. It's just not as random as in some other games of a similar type but at the same time you don't have a complete information and you must also say take into account what the other players are betting on to trying to understand what there might be on their card holders. The core mechanic is very simple. Every turn you will pick one card from your right card holder and another card from your left card holder and you will choose uh, to play one of the cards uh, as a, a fast 
speed card and the other card as a low speed card. So for example, let's say I want the Phoenix to prevail in the race based on what I'm betting on. So I could move the Phoenix by three and the Pegasus by one. So it's pretty simple. And that turn goes away. So every turn is very fast. The uh, cars, uh, essentially, are all dual values like this. Of course, the range of values in the game is, uh, is different. But many of the cars are what we call dirty tricks. So special cars uh, which represent the creature doing something nasty to the opponents to take uh, an advantage in, in, in the race. You can use these cards uh, for their bonus value, which is typically very high instead of their normal value. Right. But if you do so, the cards end up uh, in a pile, a special pile from which you draw from at the end of the game. So the creature may actually get disqualified. Okay. Okay. So this is the core uh, mechanic. When you finish the card available on the card holders, the race ends. You look at the positions in the race. If the creatures didn't arrive yet, you just look at their position and put them in the ranking. Uh, the, um, uh, so in a way, if uh, players who are familiar with Abungut, this uh, disqualification system is somehow uh, related to the system in Abungut where you gain money but uh, you must be careful that if you don't give enough money away for charity then you get to lose the game here is a little bit more nuanced it's not like that if a creature gets disqualified you're going to lose the game but if you just go for speed without bothering at all about the chances of being disqualified then you may end up uh, losing uh, your points uh, the, um, another strategic element in the game apart from the drafting and choosing the the creatures is the fact that you have a set of 11 betting cards for each player. And uh, uh, these cards, as you see, allow you to bet both on the creatures getting a good rank in the race, like first place, or creatures getting a bad rank, like last or next to last, or even creatures getting disqualified in the race. So you can actually bet also on the chance of being disqualified and deliberately seed the dirty trick deck with a lot of cards for dirty creatures because you actually want, okay, either he wins or it gets disqualified, okay. I win in any case. You have 11 cards like this, uh, every, in, uh, the game is played over three races, mm -hmm. and in every race you will use uh, three of the cards, so you have a little bit of strategy whether you want to go for the high value card, which are more difficult to score, or do you want to, to play with the safest card, like I don't know, first, second, or third place, but which give you victory points, because in, at the end of the game you will not have used all your uh, bets. You place two of the bets at the start of the race, so based just on the information that you see on the on the card holders, and uh, you place bets just by choosing a card and then picking one of the creature token here. So there is a limited uh, pool of these tokens, so typically they are less than the number of players. So uh, sometimes if you just wait too long uh, to place the bet, uh, you, you lose the chance. And uh, when the creatures, are, the first creature crosses the half race line, here or here, depending on the number of players you play with, then you will place a third bet. So of course the third bet is much safer in terms of, okay, you know, more or less how the race is going to, to end, but of course the, the tokens here are going to be scarce for the third bet, so you must be careful not to miss a chance to, uh, to play. That's essentially it. Uh, the, the game is very um, suitable for playing with all kind of age groups, uh, but still I think with enough nuances, enough uh, strategy to be satisfying for, for players, for gamers as well. Thanks for the overview of Divinity Derby by Carlo Rossi.